this is another demonstration that we have set up. As you can see, there are these two Lionel train cars, which are on this tracks. They're attached to each other by a spring, and then this red car is attached to the shaker through another spring. So we'll be exciting the spring on this side. Those vibrations will drive this car, and those in turn will drive this car. Now this is uh, a two degree of freedom system, right? There is one degree of freedom associated with the red car, one with the blue car. We'll see that there are two resonances, two resonant frequencies, and we'll also see something else. Okay, now let's, uh, let's start now. I'm gonna drive this first at a fairly low frequency at about 0.7 hertz, so less than one cycle per second. And as you can see here, we get a static-like response. Both cars are moving in unison, and they're going back and forth in unison with the same phase, and also, of course, the same frequency as the excitation. So nothing unusual there. This is basically our static-like response. Okay, now we're going to increase the frequency a bit, up to 0.9. Uh, one, I have to cut back on the amplitude of the excitation a bit. And let's see what starts to happen. We're up to 1.3, 1 1.4. 1 1.5. Now we need to cut back on the amplitude of the excitation or we might get a derailment. You can see this shaker, which is driving the system, is moving back and forth with a fairly small amplitude. Looks like an amplitude of maybe a quarter of an inch. But as you can see, these cars are moving with a much greater amplitude than that. They're also moving in phase, uh, but with an amplitude that's much greater than the amplitude of the driver. So this is a resonance. It's a first resonant frequency. Uh, we're getting large amplitude motions. and. Uh, Furthermore, both cars are moving exactly in phase with each other at that resonant frequency. Now when I raise the uh, frequency some more, up to about 3.6 hertz, we'll get the second resonant frequency, where as you can see, these cars are now moving with fairly large amplitudes, but in opposite phase opposite phase with each other. This is the second resonant frequency. A point right here in the middle of the spring is not moving. That's a nodal point. Okay, so those are the two resonant frequencies. If I go to a very high frequency, as you can see, we're now in the vibration isolation region, where this shaker is moving back and forth fairly ferociously, as you can see. Fairly large amplitude now in the shaker, but what are the cars doing? Not very much, right? They're just sitting there. That's because the, the frequency of the forcing function is much greater than the natural frequencies here. So the cars don't have time to respond to the details of the up and down motion or left and right motion of the shaker. They're responding more to the average value of the shaker, which of course is zero. So this illustrates the vibration isolation region. Also, this was at, uh, I have it now at about 10 hertz. Now we're going to lower the uh, excitation and we'll show something else. That's that second natural frequency, but what else are we going to see? Uh, let's go down to about 2.6. And, and that's pretty good, actually. This is that vibration absorber region now. Where, as you can see, the shaker's moving back and forth with a fairly large amplitude. The car that is attached to is pretty much sitting there. And the car uh, to your right, the blue car, is the one that's moving. This illustrates the vibration absorber. This middle car is seeing a symmetric loading, where the shaker is moving in, and the blue car is moving in at the same time. And then the shaker moves out, and the blue car moves out at the same time. So that middle car is seeing a symmetric loading, and hence it's remaining approximately stationary. So this is what we uh, talked about in class the other day. This is the vibration absorber. So we have then, uh, in summary then, we have uh, basically, what, uh, 
five different regions, I guess. First, there was a static region where both cars were moving together in the same phase as the driver with about the same amplitude of the driver. Then there was the first resonant frequency, second resonant frequency, vibration isolation region, and then finally this vibration absorber region.